Hey world, looking out the window. Uh, everybody doing out there today? Fine, just say thank you for subscribing and uh, liking the videos and make sure you're sharing them. Uh, it's really humbling and I really appreciate it because, uh, you know, it's good to have someone out there. And, you know, I don't care if it's one person or if it's, you know, 100 people. You know, I'm just glad that these people out here and resonating with the uh, food for thought that I'm sharing, okay? But family, today I want to talk about something because, you know, so many times, you know, we get caught up in our own little bubble, right? And we forget that other things are going on in the world that can actually one day affect your lifestyle, your, your way of living, okay? Uh, and what I mean by that is, I don't know if you guys know about the, the major protest that's been going on in Europe and, uh, and in Asia, you know, they had a major protest going on in France because the people in France are protesting a new uh, hydrocarbon bill that the France government is passing, which would make the price of gas go up, right? And so what happened, you know, the people started protesting, okay? And I don't know if you've been watching them on the Telelot Vision because remember, they don't give you a lot of information about it. But, you know, you see these people in you know, yellow, yellow vests, yellow, you know, yellow jackets, yellow vests, right? But those were the actual citizens of France, okay, uh, that were protesting. Because, see, in, in, over there in France, every person that drives a vehicle has to wear yellow, you know, has to have a, a yellow caution vest in their car. And so what were the, the civilians were doing? They were protesting by putting on their yellow vests on and, and walking in the streets, you know, protesting. And it got violent, okay? And so then, you know, the protest, like my partner was telling me about it, so I looked into it. And the protest, you know, got even bigger because, you know, when other civilians started saying that the cops and whatnot were, you know, you know being violent and, and, and brutalizing a lot of those civilians out there with the yellow jackets on, then other civilians came out there with red scarves, red scarves and blue scarves, okay? And what would these scars represent? They were representing, they were protesting against the cops, you know, brutalizing the civilians in yellow vests. And so if you do your research on it and look it up online, you'll see yellow vests and red scarves and blue scarves on people's heads. These are citizens, civilians. I mean, imagine over here, if, you know, the price of gas going up like that, the price of products go up, what they call inflation every year. What if we as citizens you know, decided to say, hey, you know, we, that's not fair. I don't remember, you remember when uh, there was uh, gas gouging prices? When there was price gouging, gouging gas prices? Uh, I know they did it during uh, Katrina. I was here in Houston. And I know they did it during Hurricane Harvey. When the price of gas went up like that, man, it was like, wait a minute. Now imagine if the citizens over here protested in the streets and whatnot. What would happen? You dig? So it's like, and you know, of course, over here we have our history of protests, which in the 60s, what did they do? Get beat down and get dogs sicked on you and, you know, put in jail. And so did those protests work? You know, I mean, I still see a, a, a particular group of people that are disenfranchised on mass levels, on a macro level, okay? Not on a micro level because, you know, you can kind of navigate yourself through the system, all right? But from, the, from a, a macro level, I mean, there's a group of people that are disenfranchised. I mean, it's not an accident. This, it's a group of people that are, are, you know, incarcerated at a higher rate, uh, you know, uh, educationally uh, deficient at a higher rate, all right, because of lack of resources, all right? I mean, just look at the differences between, you know, the federal funding to uh, college and universities in America, okay, that are originated from founding fathers or from religious groups opposed to HSBCUs, you know, the uh, historically black colleges and universities, okay? There's a huge discrepancy, right? And so with that being said, those protests in the 60s, I mean, you know, what did they really do, okay? But did we really get out there in mass numbers? No, no, not like that. I mean, Million Man March, no, you know, it's, See, these people in France, okay, and in Hong Kong, they really protested, okay? And so it was getting violent, 
right? And they don't show us that on the Talalai Vision because, of course, they don't want to put that in people's minds and everything, right? Because change does occur. Because sometimes people get fed up. You did? And so in France, that's what's going on. You know, I think it's I think it started, you know, it doesn't quiver down a little bit. I'm about to look into it, but no, they out there protesting in numbers. Why? Because of fuel taxes. You know. So when they protest, it's something that's affecting the masses of people. Because you remember money don't exist. So these people are actually in control of resources that you know the masses of people need. A small group of people control the resources that's that group of, that a large group of people need, and they use money as a conduit to control how they give it out. That's all. Okay. I mean, in Hong Kong, I don't know if you know what's going on in Hong Kong, but there are millions of people out there protesting. Right? And if you don't know the history of Hong Kong's protest, uh, just think back in the 90s uh, in Tiananmen Square. There was a uh, Student protests and the, and the Chinese uh, police, gov- police and the government were shooting them and killing them. Right? This happened back in the nineties. And if you don't know the history of Hong Kong, you remember Hong Kong was colonized and, and ruled by British, by the British. Okay, for many years. And then, uh, of course, China came in and actually wanted it back. And so they was on like some ninety-nine year, uh, ninety-nine year law. Well, they had access to Hong Kong. And so Hong Kong been actually under the guise of China for many years now. Okay? But what's going on now is China is making it easier for people in Hong Kong that do not like what's going on in the government, like i.e. artists, i.e. Uh, journalists, anybody say anything bad about Chinese government in Hong Kong can be sent to China and persecuted and sent to China. What? Okay? And see, that's what they're protesting now. They're protesting, you know, how China, okay, because remember, Hong Kong, which, you know, okay, it's under China rule, but it was supposed to be, you know, uh, one, you know, one country, two systems. Well, Hong Kong had its own you know, infrastructure, had its own things going on, but on the kind of like the guys of Hong, on the, on the guys of China, like uh, like Hawaii, you know, the Virgin Islands, you know, Puerto Rico, you know, that would be kind of equivalent to the Hong Kong China relationship. But now, you know, China's saying, okay, anybody say anything bad about China, we're gonna send you to China, and you're gonna be persecuted. And so that's what the big protest about. And it's, I mean, it's actually, you know, people being killed out there. Okay, so get out of your bubble, family, and, and and get you some global knowledge and get you some global consciousness because see, a lot of things that's going on overseas, you know, can can normally be you know premeditation of what's going to happen over here one day. Not scare tactics, but you know, real. You did? I mean, think about it. You know, we so cognitively dissonant over here that you know the federal government can shut down and hundreds of thousands of people not working, and instead of, what was our protest? We want to work. Come on, man. And the government knows that. Okay? Because when you put fear, why you think on the news it's always negative stuff on the news? It's always stuff about, you know, the worst atrocities. Okay? Because subconsciously, they keep you in fear. It's a fear-based media. All right? And they don't, and like I say, that's why you don't get the history of what happened in Haiti. You don't get the history of what happened in countries that when they really rebelled against an unfair government, things change. Right? And they don't want that mindset in America, you know? But you can mentally and spiritually, you know, protest to where you can be, uh, you know, more connected with more individuals. I mean, like I say, we don't make guns. All right? We don't have no military. And so for Afro-melanated group of people to say, okay, we're going to take over, w- w- What? You did? And so it's the same thing, but different countries. We just don't see it, all right? So like I say, I just want to give a little history lesson on Hong Kong. Like I say, it used to be ruled by Britain, but now it's ruled by China, and they're having a lot of problems over there. Uh, isn't it ironic that the Chinese government imposes the same type of tactics that other that, you know, the United States government does when it comes to Going into other people's countries and, and and if negative things are said, you're shut down. We, we, but they say you have freedom of speech. 
WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, okay? Uh, come on, man. What, Eric Snowden. See, a lot of these cats, I mean, what happened? Send him back to America. That's the same thing that's going on in China right now, but they're protesting about that, okay? I mean, that would be, that would be similar to, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of people in America protesting uh, Julian Assange having to be uh, extradited, Okay? What do you think the uh, drug the drug cartels in Mexico and Colombia feared the most? They didn't want to get extradited back to America. They want to get arrested in their own countries, sell drugs, and do all they want to do in their own country, countries. Because see, they knew that the United States government was the one that you know was over all of that. For this, uh, go back and do your history with George Bush and uh, and uh, the Oliver North situations. You know, with the Nicaragua and Contra hearings. Okay, they did not want to be extradited. And so, uh, look into that family. I just want to come back with a quick video. Uh, like I say, major protests in France, major protests in Hong Kong. And it's just interesting to uh, have a little bit more global information, okay? Well, family, in the meantime, between time, may the most high society bring you joy. And uh, don't be tripping. And I'm out of 5,000.